wrong, but I ain't loud enough. Can you hear me now? Uh, can can y'all hear me? Yep. All right. Let's get corral. All right, kids corral. Ten and under. Ten and under. Follow that other little girl. Uh huh. He's gone. They're gone. All right. All two of them, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, not you. God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Amen to that. Let me tell you something. I I love living the life that I live. I get to wake up in the morning. I get to see God waking up the world. We get to see all new life coming, especially this time of year. My wife is at home right now <laughs> watching a mare who is supposed to be having a baby just any minute, which means we're going to stay up all night, all day, for about the next three weeks until she decides to have it. You know what I mean? <laughs> We got out there and we started, first of all, I, we bring her over to the house. Okay, she, she's due soon, we'll bring her over to the house. And when you forgot about it, we have something going on next weekend, so we're preparing for that. We're preparing for the yard sale that's supposed to happen yesterday. And then I walked out there Friday afternoon, just checking her, and she bagged up. Her, her udder got big, and oh boy, that's like imminent danger there. All right, PJ, we got to get the we got to get the the maternity ward fixed up cuz PJ loves to be there when the baby hits the ground. She wants to be there and dry it off and, and and get it used to being around humans. So we spent 12 up into Friday night and then Saturday till dark getting everything switched around so we had to move animals around. And I thought to myself, why and I say this to myself a lot, why didn't we just get this done? A month ago, you know? <clears throat> well, because we were too busy getting other stuff done. And in the reading this week, my reading at home, I was reading a book called Haggai. It's in the Old Testament. Haggai. It's on page 1358. Y'all got that? <laughs> Haggai. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I, I, I'm like Harry. I've spoke Texan my whole life. Uh -huh. English is a foreign language. I'm sorry the folks that speak English, English. Mine ain't good. So, I'm going to kind of skip around in this. Follow me if you can, because uh, it, it's kind of lengthy on words. But the Lord talked to Haggai, and I'm not going to tell you the, the year and the day and the month and all that stuff, but the Lord came to Haggai and said, These people say the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, Is it time for yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains in ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are never warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. I know that one. <laughs> this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give, uh, give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains. Bring down the timber and build the house, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. You expected much? That wasn't good. Okay. Uh, where was I? You expected much, but you see little. And I've just completely lost my place. Uh, you brought home what I what you brought home, I blew away, declares the Lord. Because of my house, which remains in ruin while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because you have, because you have, the heavens have withheld their dew, the earth its crops, I've called for a drought on the field, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor in your hands. All right, what's God telling us? You're busy with all this stuff, and Fritz always 
tells us, you know, Jesus didn't die so you and I could have more stuff. That's the truth. We're busy with stuff that really doesn't matter. Right? It, it, it doesn't matter if we had a trailer load of stuff to come up here that we could have loaded the night before. It didn't matter. What mattered is we needed a place for a baby to hit the ground in a safe safe environment. We needed, you know, at home, we needed to, to make sure that, that our house was livable. We needed to make sure that, number one, we were reading the Bible and we were putting God before all that we did. Because if we didn't, nothing else is going to happen. There have been times that, that PJ and I have been out and on vacation or something, and we miss church. We miss church, and then, or it froze over uh, this past winter, and we missed a, a Sunday. Well, you know, my whole week from that point until we go to church again is completely thrown off. Not that we didn't study the Bible. We didn't. We prayed. We studied the Bible. We just didn't come and fellowship with other Christian brothers and sisters and work on what God gave us. Where is the temple of the Lord? Where, where, where is it? Is it this building right here? No, this is a restaurant. Is it that, that big church down in Houston? I can't remember the name of it, but... Is it that one or the big church over in California? No. It ain't a building anymore. God resides in each one of us. When you accept His salvation, God resides inside us. This is the temple that we're supposed to be working on. Let's go back to Haggai. What happened was, was the temple was destroyed when, when Nebuchadnezzar came down and, and took over is, uh, Jerusalem. He destroyed the temple. And then Darius uh, took over. And he said, all right, I'll tell you what. Y'all go and, and I'll, I can bring you back to the other uh, other prophets that, that, that God put a burden on to go and build his temple back. So y'all go. Go on back to your homeland and build your, rebuild your temple. They started with a beautiful temple built by Solomon. It was knocked to the ground. Now they're rebuilding it. Rebuilding it. How many of us, how many of us sitting right here got on our knees and said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. And we received that salvation. And then went askew. And tore our temple down. What's God telling us? You're messing with your stuff. Build my stuff. Where my, where my little card here fell out was over there in Matthew 6 and 33. Jesus himself, this is written in red letters, folks. It's highlighted. The important stuff is written in red, right? Jesus talked about, about you know, don't worry about your house. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Seek first the kingdom of God and His glory. And all this stuff's going to be given to you. You just take care of my stuff, and I will give you the stuff you need. Seek first the kingdom of God. <coughs> God told them not only this through Christ, but He told us back in, back in Haggai. We're going to go on over to 2nd chapter and verse 10. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, on the 20th, 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Ask the priest what the law says. If a person carries consecrated meat in the fold of his garment, and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine or other food, does it become consecrated? The priest answered, no. 
Then they got said if a person is defiled by contact with a dead body, touches one of these things, does it become defiled? Yes, they answered. It becomes defiled. Haggai says, so it is with these people and this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. Whatever they do and whatever they offer, there is defiled. Now give careful thought to this point, to, to this from this day forward. Consider how things were before one stone was laid upon another in the Lord's temple. When anyone came to a heap of 20 measures, there were only 10. When anyone went to a wine, uh, a wine vat to draw 50 measures, there were only 20. I stuck all the work in your hands with blight, mildew, and hail. Yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. From this day on, from this 24th day of the ninth month, give careful thought to the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Uh, is there yet any seed left in the barn? Until now, the vine and the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree have not borne fruit. From this day on, I will bless you. The temple was destroyed. They took it and knocked it down. What they say, Christ said, not one stone was on another one. And they rebuilt it. And from the time they started rebuilding God's temple, from the time they started putting rocks on top of each other, sticking the mortar between them, God started blessing them. Now before that, you heard what they said. You look in your wallet where you had $20, and there's two. I've been there. You go and get in your car that had a half a tank of gas, and suddenly the gas light's blinking. I'm there still. But what happens? God says, pay attention to me. You're looking at all these things that you're doing by yourself. You look at me. If you keep your eye on me, we'll get there. And you'll get there comfortable. Might not be as comfortable as you wanted to, but you'll get there. The hunters we have here, all the guys that like to go out and you know, make live things into dead things and then eat them. All right. If you lay out there, you get your crosshairs right on that deer, and then look away and pull the trigger, what's the likelihood of hitting that sucker? Not very, not very good. Well, unless you're using like a really big shotgun or a cannon or something. But the thing is, if you don't keep your eye on the mark, you're not going to reach it. They tore down Christ's temple, the God's temple. Are we rebuilding God's temple today? I was saved when I was a little boy. Uh, our granddaughter's age, one ran through here just a minute ago. I was saved when I was real little. And I knew, I knew exactly what it meant. I knew exactly what God has done for me. And I was I was on fire. And then I hit the insanity years, 13 to on up. And at that point in time, started tearing the temple down, tearing what God had put up. God was still there. You can't get rid of him. He was still there. And I drug him into a few places that I didn't need to be, much less bring God. But through it all, he's there. And then I came to my senses one day and I said, all right, Lord, I, I want to work for you. Here I am. I, I, I'm going to work for you now. And from that moment on, <laughs> from, from that moment on, God has blessed me. Did he bless me with wealth? No, I because he knows that I can't handle money. He don't need to give me a lot of it. Did he bless me with, with worldly possessions? No, he gave me what I mean. He gives me enough. He gives me more than enough. But he didn't bless me with all these, you know, I'm not a, living in a big mansion on a big, huge ranch. I'm not J.R. Ewing or anything. But he gives me enough. 
It keeps me content. It keeps me happy. Where do my blessings come mostly? Right here. He gives me a family. He gives me a family that loves me, that I can love them. We can get together. We can fellowship together. We gain strength together, and we build God's temple here in our heart. And as we do this, as we, as we, the temple gets stronger. As we grow up, God blesses us even more. I sat, <clears throat> I sat, and looked at our fences at the house. And I have uh, patched our fences at the house. I have touched our fences at the house and watched that rusty wire break and then repatched it. And got to thinking one day, why am I spending all my effort on patching something that's broke? Why am I just going to take stuff and that stuff that's faulty and put it on something else that's faulty. So this summer, my plan is just to put all new wire on it. Amen. <laughs> right? Then I ain't got to worry about running over there and make sure the horses are in. Because I promise you, if there is a little bit of a space, they ain't going to be in. Those of you who have horses, you do understand. Why are we wasting our efforts trying to patch up a life that's rusty, that's broke? Why are we trying to patch up something that's flawed? Why don't we give it to God and let Him put all new wire on it? Kick out the old furniture, put new in it. The outside might look flawed, but the inside's clean. And the important thing is what's on the inside of the temple. I'm going to say this, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. There are probably churches today that are beautiful, ornate, wonderful looking. The problem is what's inside it or the lack thereof. <clears throat> we have had cowboy churches start in a barn, uh, in feed stores, in restaurants. But the thing is, when God is in there, when God is inside it, no matter what's on the outside, this church is blessed. And you feel the love. I don't care what you do. I can't remember who it was who was talking to somebody about coming to church here, and they said, don't stand, don't stand still too long or somebody's going to hug you. It's all the love that we have. Where do we find this love? It, through the other Christians, through the other people who follow God, who through the, through the love of Jesus Christ who died on the cross showed us what love is. We found this love. We have it inside us in our temple, in God's temple, which is inside us. And everybody can see it. Everybody can feel it. Has anyone ever gone somewhere that, what, Tommy say, you're not Christian enough to be here? Folks, I don't think anybody's Christian enough to be at church. I don't think anybody's Christian enough to go to heaven. Honestly, I heard a commercial one time. A lady was talking about, uh, uh, I can't even remember what she was talking about. She was talking about uh, some uh, religion or something like that. She said, do you know what this means? You are good enough for God. <clears throat> nope. Not a single person on this earth is good enough for God. 
Bible I read tells me that our best works, the best thing we ever do is like dirty rags in front of God. But, but you say we can talk to God. We can fellowship with Him. You know, He can watch us. That's right. We can. Because He's looking through the filter of Jesus Christ's blood. And He sees us as pure because we were washed in Jesus Christ's blood. He doesn't look at the outside of a temple. He looks at the inside. Are we building God's temple the way God wants us to? What about the furnishings? Are the furnishings perfect? Are the furnishings what God wants inside us? Have you even started building it? Put one rock on top of the other. That labor of love. Have you started building it and then kind of went your own way? Let me tell you something. It's never too late until you draw your last breath. Come back to God or come to Him in the first place. That, that you say, look, God, I... I done messed up. You take the rank. You do what you have with my life. And whatever you say is okay with me. Now you can do that, and it don't cost anything. It's not, it's not hard labor. It's not, you don't have to like, flog yourself. All you have to do is say a prayer. To start building the temple that God has built inside you, Say a prayer. Follow me. Lord, Lord, I'm here. And Lord, I, my temple best messed up, Lord. I, I, I don't have you inside me to help build it. And I know I can't do it on my own. I can't be rich enough or, or pretty enough or powerful enough. Lord, only you can do it. Lord, I, I believe that you sent Christ in the world to die on the cross for me. Lord, I, I believe that he rose three days after that. Lord, that he lives with you today. And I believe he's coming back for me. And I confess him as my Savior today. Lord, so you can empty out all that mess that was in my heart of my sin. Furnish me with your Holy Spirit. Walk with me. Lord, every day that I'm on this earth, welcome me into your arms when I leave. Lord, I ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 That's the most simple thing that a person can do. And uh, uh, anybody ever heard of Marty Haggard? Uh, Merle Haggard's son? He sang a song once. He said, uh, he was talking to a friend of his about salvation. And that friend of his says, all you can do is pray. It sounds too easy. Marty said, easy for who? Jesus Christ was ridiculed. He was beaten. He was, he was embarrassed. He had to drag his own cross. They hung him up in front of the world. God, his father, had to watch this. Had to send him there. Easy for who? It's easy for us, but it was bought. It was bought at a price. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't know that salvation, I pray that you pray the, pray the prayer I just led to you. If you still don't understand, I'm going to grab my cup of coffee. I'm going to go in with my Bible and sit down. Y'all come sit with me. Let's talk. I ask you, though, before you leave this place, please know, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, that when you leave this place, you're walking in the arms of the Lord. Tommy.